Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. Business Matters introduces you to people who manage and run local businesses. Um, we have a unique uh, person we're going to talk to today. He's unique, and what he does is unique, but uh, that's Jim Cousins, the uh, station manager at uh, HCAM TV. So first of all, thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. Thank and, you. You know, I'm, I'm excited about this because I think this is an opportunity. We want, we want to talk about how you ended up doing what you're doing, because mm -hmm. that's important. But I, I think this is, uh, might be a nice opportunity to talk about where the station has come from. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then sort of your view and your, your vision for the future. Mm -hmm. But you run a television station. Yeah. What do you, what do you need to do that? What's your background? <laughs> What's a, how, did you, how did you get here? Well, originally, when I was in high school, I wanted to be the next Steven Spielberg. So I wanted to go to film school and learn how to make movies. And I also liked computers, so my parents said, it's nice, Jim, but you can make a living <laughs> off a of computer, so maybe you could go learn that. So I went to ULO, and I was a computer science major, and it was the worst year of my life because I don't really have a head for math. So I quickly realized that this was not for me. So I transferred to Boston University. I, I loved you, Lowell, would have stayed there, but they don't have a film major. So I transferred to Boston University, and I got a degree in broadcasting and film. So now I'm, I'm done. I'm ready to go. I didn't really want to move out to California right away, so I'm thinking I'll, <laughs> I'll work around local and get some experience. My first job in the field was in Westboro. I was a part-time production assistant, just helping people make shows and you know, keeping the place clean. And within six months, I had realized that my passion is community information. And I would rather spend my career not making a movie that millions of people will enjoy for two hours, but instead running a little TV station that a community could use every single day. So from the very beginning, I've always said our mission is to inform, entertain, and educate the, the members of our, of our community. You know, uh, let's go back to the University of Lowell mm -hmm. experience because I, I don't think uh, we talk enough about this, but tell me a little bit about the, 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 this tough year and the, the thought process that you went through to ultimately make what is a pretty substantial change. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that it really, I always knew what I wanted to do. I knew my oh, heart's okay. desire, and my parents, you know, were very. My, my, you know, my dad always says, "I'm a simple man, Jimmy." You know, and they really could see that having a skill as pro, like programming computers, there's a need for that. But you know, going into showbiz, that's a very <laughs> difficult field. So they were concerned for me, and I kind of, I always knew that I was, you know, I had a creative streak in me, and this is what I wanted to do, but. Um, you know, listening to the advice of my parents, I decided to try to give computers a shot. And um, I, the only F I ever got in college was during that year. Oh, wow. Because I had to take a math <laughs> course, and it was just brutal. And, you know, it was interesting learning the, the computer languages. <laughs> Back then, Pascal was like the big one. Um, so I really kind of enjoyed that. And for many years, I would rebuild computers for my friends and stuff like that. But, um, but I always just like there was, there was, I really think that everybody's given unique talents, and it was within me somehow that I really wanted to, you know, make television or film that people can access and get benefit from. What was the what was the uh, the difference in the courses, uh, the the course content when you went to the Boston University? The only thing that if I could do anything different, I would have liked to have spent my entire four years at BU. Because, you know, when you're surrounded by like-minded people learning the same things, you get kind of like a really good um, community uh, empowerment type thing. So, you know, at U Lowell, um, I was just doing all kinds of like math and sciences and, you know, running the code and debugging it and things like that. And so that's the kind of stuff we would talk about. When you get to BU, you're working on 16 millimeter film projects and you're talking about your final film. And it's just really, you know, when you're in the field that you know 
that it, it's right for you, it's just so enjoyable. You talk about it all the time. Um, you know, when <laughs> like after class, you hang out and you like help other people with their projects, and they help it with you. You're really immersed. That time of life, you just have nothing but time. You have no responsibilities, and you just like soak up and spend an enormous part of your life doing what you love. Didn't didn't though the um the time at University of Law, that gave you a, an understanding of how computers work. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that, is it, isn't that, uh, didn't that turn out to be helpful? I would think it would, no? Well, I think that, you know, at that time computers were really, you know, starting to take off and like, you know, becoming more invasive uh, in everyday life. So it helped me knowing what I needed in a computer. You know, and it helped me, like, if something wasn't running right, I could have a different way of thinking about it and maybe kind of look at what was running. But I didn't spend enough time there to really, um, you know, have it be a significant part mm. of what I am. Mm. So the course content, you, have, you, you work in the Hopkins schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, so you must, the, the young people that you work with must talk to you all the time about them and they, they, they have the same kind of vision and in, in, uh, illusions of, for, for themselves? Do you, do you have a chance to impact their decision making as they move towards college? Um, I would say I don't look at it so much as an impact. I look at it as, like, as, as far as, you know, hey, you might want to do this. I look at it as people who are already interested, that's why they join the TV club. You know, I have three people, I have five people in there. Three of them were um, members of the middle school TV club where I taught them how to make uh, video announcements there. And they continued on in high school. And I got a couple other people who have said, you know, I'm joining this because I'm really interested in this. I'd like to be a filmmaker, um, you know, for a career. Or in another, the other guy is like, doesn't know exactly what he wants to do, but he knows he would like to be in media somehow. So it's very rewarding for me. Yeah, I would imagine. For a kid who has an interest to be able to get some hands-on experience. A uh, really quick funny story. It was so we did we taped the um, the anchor segments for the for the newscast yesterday. And the kid who was supposed to do it um, at seventh period, he got sick, so he went home. So I had this other kid on standby. And I and so I said, all right, so can you do it? And he goes, yes. And he goes into his backpack and he whips out a suit coat oh. <laughs> and I said do you walk around with that and he said only on Wednesdays <laughs> and, and Wednesday is the, is the club day yes yeah wow that's a right well that's a that's a big that's a big deal yeah, yeah. That, you know he, he he's obviously thinking thinking yeah. ahead planning yeah and wow. that's what I love that's what I love you know if I was making movies right oh, it racks up millions of dollars, and you know, I know all these people are liking it, and I love movies myself. I watch a lot of movies. I like it for the entertainment value, but what I'm doing here is just so much more connected to people's lives. I just love that. So let's go back, now, now let's move ahead. You've graduated from BU, all right. and, and your first experience in community access TV. Yes, so um, at that time, Greater Media Cable was still in existence, and they ran a lot of towns. They didn't run Hopkinton. Um, so I applied, I volunteered there um, for like, I don't know, a few weeks or a few months, and then an opening opened up, and I became a part-time production assistant. Um, and Westboro was a great town. We used to call that the Starship Enterprise because it had really good funding, and had really good people, and um, we had a really great studio. So after a, a period of time, I don't really know if it was a year or so, then a full-time position opened up there. And I worked there uh, as a full-time production assistant. And then um, my next step from there was to be, they used to call them public access directors because the type of television station this is, which is for one community, um, it's usually called PEG access, public, educational, and government. So, so I was the public access director. I ran several of their um, facilities. I ran Northbridge, I ran Grafton and Upton. Um, I was in Holliston for a little while, and then I came back to Westboro. Um, 
because as I said, it was the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> so, so I ran that for several years, and um, it was a tremendous experience. I, you know, I rebuilt the studio um, with all new equipment, wired it all up, um, and uh, uh, cleaned it up, set it up the way that I would like, trained a bunch of people there. The smartest man I've ever met in my life was during that phase. Um, his name was Jim also, and uh, he was a, um, he was an engineer, and he was the engineer that engineers would go to when they couldn't solve a particular thorny problem. Huh. And he's exactly, he's like Sheldon um, from Big Bang Theory, oh, yeah, yeah. had very little <laughs> social skills, and, but he just had a passion for this, you know? And we would just work together, and he, we really had a great time. So for, then there, the, you, you were there a while, mm -hmm. and then Hopkinton? No, at that point, um, I then had three children at home, and my daycare provider moved out of town. So I looked at our budget, and um, I said to my wife one day, you know what, after we're done paying for daycare, I'm bringing home like $100 a week. So <laughs> why don't I quit my job, and I'll stay home and, and uh, spend some time with the kids? And I never forget, my wife looked at me, she said, you would do that? I said, yes, they're my kids. You know, I remember growing up, my dad worked seven jobs to support his family, and we never really saw him. And, I, and he had a dad who wasn't in the picture, and that was like the best thing that he could do. But he didn't really have a relationship, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we actually have a great relationship now as we're adults. And, um, but he didn't really have a lot of time with us. And so I have always felt totally blessed that learning from his experience, I was able to take it to another step where I spent about five years at home raising my kids and fostering a relationship with them that yeah. I never could have had otherwise. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, it's not a sacrifice, mm -hmm. it, it, is it? it? It really isn't a sacrifice. Right. It's an important thing to do. It's almost a blessing, I guess, yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah. So during that time, we're living in Hopkinton, and it's great. I used to tell my wife when she'd get home from work, I haven't done a darn thing all day and I'm exhausted. So at some point I needed to do something. So kind of going back to computers, I started designing websites. And I had a few companies that I would maintain and create their website for. And um, I actually designed the first website that the Hopkinton Public School Systems ever had. Oh wow. So I was doing that one. And then um, I was maintaining the, the town website as well. So that, to me, was my community connection at that point. That's what I was able to do. And about five or six years later, all my kids were now in school full time, and I was ready to um, get back into the workforce, which happened to be at the same time that Hopkinton was rene renegotiating their cable contract. And previously, things used to work that the cable company would run everything. They would hire the staff and they would you oh, know, wow. run the facility. Yeah. They were transitioning away from that. They didn't want to do that anymore. They said, we will fund it as, you know, through the cable contract with the um, Board of Selectmen, but we don't want to do the day-to-day hands-on um, hands running of it. So, so Hopkinton was just transitioning to a, um, a nonprofit corporation. So the Board of Selectmen actually formed the entity called Hopkinton Community Access and Media, HCAM. Okay. And they created a board of directors. They appointed um, three members. Uh, the school superintendent appointed a member, and the cable committee in town appointed a member. So now they had this five-member board, and uh, they had funding from uh, Comcast. And so they went out and they um, advertised and interviewed for the inaugural position of station manager. And fortunately for me, uh, I, was, I was ready to get back into, into things and I um, applied for it and received it. What did, what, the facilities at that point, non-existent? Non well, non-existent, um, they, because it had been in several places. Uh, with the cable contract, Comcast was providing the staff and the equipment, but the town had to provide the space. So it had been in several places. It had been in 
the basement of the middle school in a sewing room. And I was volunteering at that time. I was volunteering um, creating All About Hopkinton, and I was covering school committee meetings. And so in order to do one of our shows, we would have to move out all of the sewing machines into the hall, bring our set out, set it up, do the show, put the set away, put the cameras away, and then move all the sewing machines wow. back in. Wow. So it was there for a while. It actually went to Milford for a while, and um, they had a building there, and we would be in that building. We actually would tape in the receptionist area. Um, then they moved to 85 Main Street in the basement. They were there for a little while. And then when they built the new high school, they had a studio as part of the high school. And we moved into there, and we shared the space. With the, with the school. And now that space is still utilized for a, a, a school program? Yes. Yep. The, what, did the equi what, what, what kind of equipment did you, it, it must have been minimal. It was, it w well, it was ancient. It was like 15 years old. Um, it was three quarter inch tape, big, huge decks, not very portable. So with the new cable contract, um, you know, came funding for capital investment. So the, the, um, the board of directors met and were talking about, you know, like what we need to do, what's the best way to work this. And um, it was decided that, you know, it's, it's hard to share the space between the school and the, the public. So we could only get in, you know, in the late afternoon and um, oh, yeah. Yeah. just, you know, it was just, it was hard. So they voted to move the public studio into its own building, which um, we, the people who own this building, where we're at, 77 Main Street, um, I cannot say enough good things about them. They like really are supportive of our mission in the community. So we left the, the working studio at the high school where it was, and then we built this new studio here on Main Street. And the, um in, in terms of programming, mm -hmm. you must have started out with, w w when you started, I would assume you would, you would cover the selectmen's meeting and mm -hmm. some other government meetings, but yeah. the community program must have been pretty limited. Yes, yes. When they went to Milford for a while, yeah. they lost a lot of their, um, they, they were called producers. They lost a lot of their volunteers. It was just, I mean, you know, it's just down the road, but it was enough of a hurdle that a lot of people went away. With the contract, with um, Comcast, we have to cover Board of Selectmen and school committee meetings. Huh. And we've also always said, of course, we would never not cover town meeting. So those were like the three big ones that were a given. And then other than that, it was really up to us to, you know, create what we felt the community wanted. And that's like a really important part because typically when the cable company is running things, they don't care if anybody is making any shows because it's just a commitment that they have to check off on a box. Now that we have a, a nonprofit entity whose core mission is to inform our community, you know, we said we are training the residents to come in and do whatever ever they want to do, whatever kind of show they want. But we're also, you know, if this is Hopkinton, then these are the people who are going to come in and have a passion and volunteer. And these are the people who are just going to watch us on TV. And we have to care about everybody because everybody right. is supporting us. So a lot of what you, the, the, the core or, or a substantial portion of HKM TV mm -hmm. uh, gets put on the air because of volunteers. Right, exactly. They're involved in everything we do. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, as we grew, I originally started off as a part-time employee uh, part-time station manager. And then, um, I don't know how it worked, if I went full-time first or if Mike Trojan joined us. So um, he was our second employee. And then, you know, we always have said, what, you know, what are we creating? We need to make sure that certain shows that the community will be interested right. in get covered. High school graduations, middle school plays, lots of Hiller sports, things like that. But when we cover a basketball game, there can be up to seven people at that game, running the cameras, directing, doing graphics. Really? It's seven. a big, yep, announcing. It's a big crew. And there's only four people who work here in total. So 
volunteers are impacting just about What's, everything what does it, we do. What does it take to cover a town meeting? Um, town meeting, well, when we first started, it was a minimum of one person because we, we could do one camera. Right. Um, but now we would usually have either two or three camera people, a director, somebody running graphics. So you got five people right there. Well, does every community in the Commonwealth have um, a, a community access station? Well, I can't say yes or no. I would, my, I think so, because we are really lucky to live in Massachusetts. Massachusetts has very strong laws supporting um, access TV. Some other states, when Verizon was getting into the game with Fios, um, you know, they didn't want to deal individually. So they got some states to change their laws where they could just have a blanket, um, blanket community of the entire mm -hmm. state and they would just you know, create a few studios here or there. But Massachusetts is very, very supportive and most towns would have one. Jim, how do you, how do you measure um, the, the HCAM TV against other community access TV stations? And, and where, would you, where would you rank? <laughs> where would you rank Hopkins? All right. So. You got to step out of yourself to answer that, I, I think, a little bit. But. Yeah, yeah. So first place, um, I really don't rank myself against ones. I compare myself to them. I feel nobody has all the best answers, so I'm always eager to see what other communities are doing and taking the best out of everywhere I can and putting it into our pot. Um, I do feel that we have a uh, excellent station and I think that it comes from our commitment of not just serving the volunteers who come in and train on the equipment but really having a mind for what do people want to see. When I first got this job the original president said, now listen Jim, what I really don't want to be is the president that runs HCAM into the ground. And I said, <laughs> I know, neither do I, because you know, I had never run a separate entity before. I had always worked for a cable company. So we had our budget and, you know, was it going to work? We had only 850 square feet. Was that enough space to run a station? So there were a lot of unknowns right, out there. Right. Um, and I have always said from the very beginning, you know, I want to make HCAM so important to our community that if the cable companies ever went away, that town meeting would vote our budget on their floor. Wow, wow, interesting. That's, an, that's, a, that's a fascinating uh, way to put this in perspective. If, um, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of where you want to take the station, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've thought about that. Mm -hmm. If you do some, in, in, this physician's focus that you do, a program that gets produced here, uh, you do all the work here, and then that goes out to almost every community in the Commonwealth. is phenomenal. So that's got to put you in a leadership position. But do you see do you see yourself doing more of that? What's the vision for the future for for HCAM TV? So we are uh, again. There's there there are many many wonderful things about our community, and you know we began physician focus um, because one day I saw Bruce Carlin in the um, town hall. And I was saying, hey, you know, we should like we should create something, and it turned into the show that reaches over 90% of the cable market in Massachusetts, and I love that. I love that. That's like that is so wonderful. Um, the main core of what we do is within the borders of our community. So when I think about what is next and what is more, after 12 years, we really got um, a good foundation of what we do and what I want to do is is really push out so that everyone in the community uh, knows knows of us and connects with us you know a lot of people know us because we do the selectmen's meeting right but right. they may not know that we do this show or they may not know that we do Hiller sports or we have a newscast so I have realized over the years that there will never be one thing that I do that I can say, everybody knows us now. It's every day, it's like, you know, what does the community need? How can we reach these people? Like, for example, there's a, there's a, a library groundbreaking ceremony. You guys get out, you cover it, yeah. you, you produce a piece and, and you get it out. The, the, um, in, in terms of the, 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 
the future, mm -hmm. um, it would seem to me, to me that part of the job, part of the challenge is getting people to understand the potential here. Mm -hmm. I would bet most people underestimate, underestimate the potential. Yes. Very many times, whenever we do something, if there's a studio audience or if there, I do a tour for yeah, uh, right. Cub Scouts, they will come in and say, wow, I never knew we had this here. That's the challenge. Yeah. Is that the most difficult part about your job? What's the most challenging part? Oh, uh, pro yes, I would say that, because that is the biggest challenge to overcome. You know, I just rebuilt the whole studio HD. I can do that. I can make a TV show. It's promoting it and connecting with the community that is a really hard thing. Today's world is so busy. So is there, when you, when you talk HD, it, it, is this the same kind of equipment that you'd find at Channel 4 or 7 or? No, this is the baby brother to that equipment. Okay. okay. It's kind of professional level, it's not broadcast grade. So our stuff could go on a Channel 4 and look great, but you know we have HD, they have 4K. That kind of thing. Wow. There's one message you'd like to deliver to the community. What would it be? That we exist, and not only can you see so many aspects of our community, but you can also come involved because it's fun to make TV shows, and you want a piece of this action. Yeah. You know, it, it's uh, interesting. Uh, the more we do these kinds of programs, the more we realize that the community has um, many, many assets, uh, many assets. And I think uh, HCAM is clearly one of them for the town of Hopkinton. And I think we're, we're, uh, we're lucky to have the quality of management that we have at HCAM, the quality of programming, and, uh, and, that, and more importantly, there's an excitement here that wants to do more and more for the community. So Jim, thanks for taking the time. Uh, wish you all the best. and. Uh, and we'll see if we can help get the word out uh, about the, the quality operation that's being run at HCAM. Thank you. This has been great.